West Coasters were people like Hampton Hawes, Buddy Collette, Ray Brown, Bud Shank, Shelly Mann, and Lee Konitz. Uh, there were a whole lot of West Coasters. And there was this supposed dichotomy that West Coast jazz was white jazz and East Coast jazz was hipper black jazz. But in fact, there were a lot of black West Coast players. Also, I would say that West Coast jazz was more melodic. It was more contrapuntal. It um, was prettier. But it swang just as hard as East Coast jazz. I met Frank at a gig that he was doing, and Rosalinda was there. So we had a brief conversation. Art was already deceased, and Frank wanted me to manage his band or his career, and I said no. I said to him, I only do that for love. I was managing Art. He wanted me to do that. Art cast me in a role. He had to have somebody taking care of him. It was a 24-hour day job, basically. Not only was I dealing with trying to keep him sober for gigs and recording sessions, I was also booking musicians, booking tours, trying to keep him happy, trying to keep the fucking fans away with their drugs, who would ruin a concert for the thrill of being able to hand Art Pepper some drugs, which of course he would ingest immediately. I mean, it was a 24 hour a day job and it was very, very hard. When women talk about hard lives with guys, you know, who are dope fiends or whatever, and they stick with them, Unless he's a genius, I just don't see the point. There's no percentage in it. Art did a couple of terms in San Quentin and played in the jazz band whenever he was there. He talks about the opposite when he was in the LA County Jail. And not only did you not play music, but you didn't get to hear any music. He said, can you imagine a life without music? To him, that was horrendous. You're safe in jail because you know the rules. You know exactly how it works, what the consequences are for every action. And if you're a celebrity like Art was, and I assume Frank was too, you're treated special.